What's going on guys? Welcome to another Tutorial Linux episode. They're episodes now, and this is the first season. So get ready. Uh, we're talking about the layout of the Linux file system. It's pretty jumbled. I think we've covered that so far. It basically grew over, I mean now it's like 40 years, and it will keep working even if you put files and directories and configuration stuff in bizarre places. It's really flexible and powerful. Of course, this is a problem. So people have kind of developed conventions to where to put stuff on a Linux system. You should really stick to these conventions. Now, to use these conventions and not confuse anyone, you need to know where to generally find things on Linux. Okay, so presuming we're in a fresh shell, let's just go through. So everything begins at root. Uh, we think of root as being at the top, uh, so instead of like the root of a tree, it's a file system tree, but it's actually sort of upside down. So root's at the top, and everything hangs on root. We're going to explore sort of the main branches close to root. I guess we'll just sort of go in semi-alphabetic order, starting with bin. Now, bin is where your base operating system commands are the sort of base package in Unix systems. So like if you're running FreeBSD or OpenBSD, you will see, uh, I mean, this is like part of the distribution, part of the operating system. It's not like Linux where it's Linux with a bunch of GNU utilities and a bunch of other utilities sort of thrown together in, in, in some kind of combination that seems to work at, at the time where the distribution is released. In Unix, this is all part of the base operating system. So bin really is just commands that ship with your base operating system. In Linux, when you install other stuff, they often uh, have the decency to put just links into bin and not actually install binaries there and keep their actual files somewhere else. However, when we get to etc on Linux, ETC has configuration files for everything from your base system to all the software packages you install, which can get kind of unclean and jangled up uh, if you've got a system that's been running for a long time. And in that case, I find the Unix way, sort of, especially like what you see in FreeBSD, just way better because they have the ports tree, and then even if you install binaries, of course they make links in bin here, just like on Linux, but they also keep their configuration completely separate from the base system. So again, sorry, long story, but my point is, in Linux you have a base system that's put together from disparate sources, and on Unix you have a very tightly integrated one. So, when we list what's in uh, bin on Linux, these, are, these come from all over the place. A lot of them are GNU, which is where the GNU Linux comes from, the kernel is Linux, and then a lot of these utilities and basic operating system binaries are GNU. On a Unix box, that wouldn't be the case. Good, so basic system commands. The stuff we've used is in there. Move, copy, um, you know, list, uh, etc. Boot. Um, here you've got your kernel, uh, your bootloader, that's the grub in this case. Um, if you have a really old machine, you might have Lilo. You've got kernel and kernel files, basically. So this is Linux. You're looking at Linux itself. It's beautiful. This is fun. Uh, dev, all of your devices. So like your hard disk, it's listed here. So if we, uh, I think it's probably going to be SDA. So let's list dev. You can generally see Linux will name things SD for a regular old hard disk. A is the first one it sees, and then so you would have like SDB would be the second one, SDC would be the third one, and then these numbers are the partitions on there. So I've got like LVM and stuff set up, so it's got a boot partition, and then SDA5 is an LVM volume with uh, an encrypted container inside that contains my actual file system. Yay! But there you go, so disks and then the partitions on those disks. Likewise, I mean, you've got like CD-ROM, um, all the teletypes, so if you're like switching terminals, they're not virtual terminals, but they're, uh, you can switch them by hitting like Control-Alt and then one of the F keys, you can do that. Anyway, um, so there are all your devices. Now, etc, 
you're definitely going to want to look at this through less because it is on Linux, especially because of the aforementioned reasons of Linux is a dirty pile of like everything you've ever installed. Here you've got, so this is like system configuration and then configuration for all the extra software you've installed with your package manager or some other way. So you can see just conf files for Earthang on your system. Uh, likewise, if you actually go into etc, most most programs that you've got have their own folder. So it's like namespaced pretty decently. So like if I'm looking for the configuration file for SSH, I'm always going to look here first. I'm going to always go etc SSH and then let's see what's in there. You know, so there you go. Home is next. We already know that. That is a home for all users that are not root and their home files. We've covered lib and lib64. Oops, <laughs> we only have a single, <laughs> a single 64-bit library. So lib and lib64. These are what would be DLLs uh, in Windows, dynamically linked libraries. Uh, I think that's actually like a better name for them. So these are libraries that programs on your system can use to do their thing. And each of these is probably used by lots and lots of different programs, and they all deal with some sort of functionality for your system. So this is basically like code that any software on your system can use for common things that need to get done. Uh, on Ubuntu, I don't know who else does this, uh, media is a mount directory where auto-mounted things go, because usually only root can mount things, and Ubuntu, because it's trying to be user-friendly, will auto-mount stuff in media. So if you put a CD-ROM in, you don't have to like become root and then mount like manually mount that whatever's on that file system that's on the CD-ROM. It, it gets auto-mounted, but it, it's all at media. Uh, on most systems, uh, this is actually mount, MNT, but Ubuntu has this media thing. So when you throw an USB stick or CD-ROM or an external hard drive uh, onto an Ubuntu system, it shows up in media. Uh, this one's like, you should know it's there. A lot of people don't use opt. Uh, some people do use opt. Some places I've worked only use it for, for uh, like, for example, only on desktop systems. You'll generally not see anything in here on servers, but the desktop systems will have any extra software other than the base install in opt. Again, this is where Linux is kind of messy, and it depends on how this is done in your environment. But opt is basically optional software. So you can throw extra software here if you're not installing it through the package manager. If you're like manually compiling a program, you would throw its files here, make, make install, compile a thing, make a link from bin to the actual place where the executable is, the binary that you're running. And, you know, then maybe in the configuration here, say, oh, dude, look in etc whatever for the config file. And then you would, you know, do your configuration there. Anyway, so you should know about opt, like if you're looking for something and you have no idea where things are installed, maybe they're in opt. Proc, we've covered. Um, this is, well, actually, you should list it like this. There's basically one directory in here for each process that's running on your machine, and there's some, some sort of configuration files in addition to that. So, like, for example, I go into this in much more depth in the videos on managing processes, but if you list one, oh, whoops, proc1, this has got to be init, right? So you get a bunch of stuff in here where the kernel gives you information about that process. So proc is basically a virtual file system that the kernel uses to communicate with you and any other program on your machine about the state of processes that are running. If that sounds weird, uh, it is. It's kind of weird. I suggest you watch the other videos on it. I'm not going to get too much into it here. So proc gives you information about processes that are running. And because everything in Linux and Unix is sort of done through files, uh, this is how it's implemented here. So you have a bunch of stuff that kind of looks like files, even though it's not really, not the way you traditionally think of a file. Good. Root, we know. This is root's home. Uh, obviously, I'm not root, so it denies me that. Uh, I don't think there's even anything in here, but... You could obviously check. <laughs> I may be the biggest card in existence. There we go. Nothing in there. Sbin. These are critical files that 
your machine needs to uh, generally get itself up and running. These things should not be messed with. You're almost never going to modify this on, in a normal sysadmin day. But it's good to know that this stuff is there. Um, I, on Ubuntu, I can do this. I can just run if config. On Debian, I might have to do sbin if config. And that's just a little bit of a security precaution to make sure I'm calling the right one because otherwise someone could just throw um, a modified version of this uh, somewhere else and I would accidentally run it. If config just lists, uh, like for example, the state of my, my physical and virtual network adapters. So there you go, sbin, really important stuff for your system. Temp, these are fun temporary files. Temp is blown away every time you reboot your machine. It's just a temporary space for holding stuff. A lot of the time when you download something, the unfinished download file is kept here. Likewise, if you're if you're messing around with compiling something, you might use this as like some part of your script will throw something here and then use it later and then delete it when it's done. Uh, but this really is temporary. User is sort of a subdivided list of non-super essential files and commands. So for example, most most of the binaries on your system, most of the programs are in user bin. This is gonna be a huge list. Uh, matter of fact, <laughs> let's see how many. Yeah, uh, humongous. Oh, you can actually just do, uh, there you go. Uh, two ways of seeing how many how many things are in a in a directory. Uh, but basically, you've got binaries, non-essential binaries, self-explanatory. Self uh, this is like header files. If you're compiling programs yourself, shared libraries, your own software, more sort of system management, like system important commands. So for, let's see what's in there. It's like admin stuff that you might like. Yeah, okay, so it's basically like admin commands. Okay, like you install a new kernel or you change some something about how your system boots, you know, then you would run like update grub afterwards or something like that. So there's like sysadmin commands. You don't need to like know everything in here. You, you will grow to have an appreciation for almost everything that's in here at some point. User share, traditionally things that might be common to multiple systems. I honestly, like every place you're gonna work is gonna have its own rules about this stuff, like especially about things like user share, opt, etc. But okay, here's where you would basically put things that you intend to have on every system that you roll out. You know, if you roll out 100 desktops, this is where you would put things that are all common to all of them. And then the last really important one, uh, var. This is uh, var, I think, for various. Uh, it's got a whole bunch of different stuff. The stuff you're going to be really interested in is log. Var log has all of your system logs in it. We'll talk about those in another video, but you should know that that's where they are. Good. So that's sort of a whirlwind tour of the basic layout of the Linux file system. Now you kind of know what's going on underneath all of these top-level directories in root. In the next video, we're going to talk a little bit more about theory behind this stuff. Uh, it's useful, practical stuff like how to deal with path names, how to deal with like spaces in commands or file names. We'll also deal with mounting and unmounting file systems because that's something you'll probably be doing quite a bit. Well, I hope this gives you an overview. I know this is kind of complicated. You don't need to memorize this. This will just sort of sink in with time. The key is practice. The key is just playing around with this stuff. So don't try to memorize it all. Just keep kind of refreshing this in your brain and it will start sinking in. Uh, likewise, as you solve problems and actually do real work on systems, uh, this will become seared into your memory because you're going to learn it while sweating bullets, you know, trying to kick out a hacker or like, you know, repair a system or whatever. Cool. I hope that helped. Give it a thumbs up if it did. Uh, likewise, if it didn't, also give it a thumbs up, but leave me a comment and tell me what could be better. Good. Now you know how the file system looks. See you in the next video.